Hey everyone, welcome to another ranking, and welcome to my ranking of Mike Judge's films slash TV shows. Yes, Mike Judge. Mike Judge is a really funny guy. Let's just face it. He has made a lot of really funny films. He's a really talented writer slash director, but he's also created a lot of good television shows out there, and I thought I'd rank both his TV shows and movies together, movies he's directed and shows he has created. I thought I'd put them all together and do a ranking of my least favorite to my favorite. Yes, most of his shows and movies are hits, so this wasn't really that difficult of a list to make, so positivity. Anyways, let's get to it. Here's my ranking of Mike Judges' movies and TV shows from my least favorite to my favorite. Coming in number eight is The Good Family. Yes, this is the only show slash movie I can actually say I don't really like. I don't think the show is really that great. Um, the animation is subpar. The jokes don't really land. Uh, it didn't have very many episodes. It was like 11, 12, 13 episodes or something. One season and stuff. And it's not good. It tries to be like a different raunchy cartoon like other raunchy cartoons out there. And this it's just not as good as other shows he's created. Shows I'm about to talk about. And it's... I didn't like it. I just didn't get into this one. I think there is a fan base for it, just I'm not one of them. If you like it, that's fine. Just I, I out of Mike Judges' work, I think this is like his weakest work. I just didn't find it funny or clever or interesting. I couldn't get into the story or characters and yeah, I just I didn't like the animation style. Just, it wasn't my kind of humor, my kind of show, so yeah. Definitely his weakest out of his filmography and televisionography. <laughs> Coming in number seven is Extract. Extract has a pretty good cast. It has like Jason Bateman and Ben Affleck and Ed Helms and stuff. And there is some funny jokes in this movie, but this is definitely his weakest film out of his films. And yeah, I, just, I never really had a, you know, an itch to ever watch this movie again. I laughed quite a few times. There was a one or two characters that I did enjoy. It's a perfectly passable comedy, but for Mike Judge comedy, it doesn't leave that impact or that iconic feel like his other previous comedies and just it's it doesn't have the clever satire or good social commentary again like his other films and yeah it's just kind of just serviceable and just kind of like a one and done kind of comedy it's nothing bad it's just nothing that great Coming to number six is Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> Butthead. Uh, really good show. I mostly watched this when I was younger. I always thought it was cool of me to watch because it's like this, you know, raunchy cartoon series and stuff that played on MTV and stuff. <laughs> I just thought it was really cool to watch Beavis and Butthead, and it was very funny. It, it was. It was juvenile at times, and a bit uh, rude for no reason, uh, but it did have some clever political humor and had good pop culture references in the 90s. This was like a 1995 TV show, and yeah, I haven't really watched it since. I They brought it back, and I did watch it when they brought it back and stuff, but yeah, it's nothing that I throw on all the time and stuff. I'm not like a huge diehard Beavis and Butthead fan, but it is funny. Like, it's nothing I watch a lot, but it is funny. Coming to number five is Beavis and Butthead Do America. Yes, this <laughs> really funny film. A uh, really funny movie. Again, nothing I throw on a lot and just like, yeah, I gotta watch Beavis and Butthead Do America. That's a classic. It is a good movie, though. 1996, this movie came out, and my God, Roger, Roger and Ebert, uh, both, uh, Roger and Ebert, Cisco and Ebert, what's wrong with me? They both gave this movie the thumbs up. They both loved it. Two thumbs up for Cisco and Ebert at the movies, and... Yeah, it was, it was a funny film. Uh, it has good social commentary, good pop culture jokes and stuff. I am Cortolio, and very quotable, very uh, very funny, very funny. Uh, the animation is better because it is a film and stuff. I do wish they went, I wish they pushed the buttons a little more because it is a movie. Like, uh, we have the restrictions of television and the FCC and stuff. You can't say certain things, but this is a movie. I think they could have pushed the buttons a little more with the film. If it was more of, like, a hard R-rated film, I think this movie could have been much funnier. We could have had another, like, South Park movie or Team America World Police and stuff, because those are so funny, those movies. This one doesn't quite reach that level of greatness, like those two films, but... Still a funny film with some clever humor, clever satire, and yeah, I think it is a good movie, and I think it's almost as good as the show and stuff, and yeah, do America, good film. Coming in at number four is a classic, and that's Office Space. Office Space. Again, a film I love watching. I watch this movie about once a year, and I love it. I love it. I quote it a lot. 
especially uh, with guys at my work, we talk about like the flair and stuff. Like some people like put buttons on their hats and we call it flair. And a lot of people have no idea what the fuck we're referencing. And we're referencing office space, you know, because Jennifer Aniston at her job, she has to wear the flair on her shorts and stuff. <laughs> really funny shit. And yeah. Someone's got a bad case of the Mondays. I even say that shit at my work too, just to piss people off. <laughs> really, I, I quote this movie at my everyday job and stuff, and it's it's a quotable film. It's a great film to quote when you're at work and stuff, because it's a movie about work and stuff, and hilarious. I love Ron Livingston in this film. I love his buddies. I love everyone in this movie. This is just a really, really funny film. Jennifer Aniston is also really, really funny, and yeah. It's it's classic. It's got iconic scenes like the scene when they're like destroying the the copier on the the grass. Is it a copier or a printer or a computer? It's a computer, right? Whatever. When they're destroying it with the rap music and stuff in the in the middle of the field and stuff. It's it's a really funny funny scene. Very iconic scene. It's a classic film. Has great humor and yeah, just uh, it's a film I quote on my everyday life and yeah, Off Space, great film. Conan number three is Silicon Valley. Yes, the TV show Silicon Valley that's still going and still going pretty damn strong. I love this show. I, I still watch it. I think it is so good. It hasn't lost its steam yet. It is still very consistently funny. I love these characters. I love Jared. Jared's one of my favorite characters. I love Gilfoy, Dinesh, it's Kumail Nanjiani. Like, this is like... Before the big sick, he was on Silicon, and he's still on Silicon Valley, and he's great in the show. I love Richard, I love all these characters and stuff, they're all really, really funny characters. Even Ehrlich, played by T.J. Miller, he's not on the show now, but he was very, very funny in the show, and I love these guys, they're a bunch of, they're programmers, they're, uh, they're... They're basically trying to design their own internet now, like, at first it started, it started off with, uh, Richard designing this, uh, this software called Pied Piper and stuff, and then basically it's now growing into something that Richard wants to design his own internet. He wants to make his own internet design and stuff, and now he's running his own company, Pied Piper, and it's run by this big corporation and stuff, and he's fighting against this other big, uh, computer corporation called Hooli and stuff that's run by this complete moron and stuff, and yeah, there's a lot of great, great humor in this show, and yeah, I love it. It's a great show. It's still going really strong right now, and yeah, it's it's amazing. The reason I didn't put it at number two is because I don't know how it's going to end. I have no idea how long this show's going to go on for. Like, some shows can lose their steam if they go on for like 20 seasons and shit like that, like the fucking Simpsons, but who knows when the show's going to end, but if it ends like this season, it ended really strong, and yeah, I, I think it's a great show, and Silicon Valley, super funny. If you haven't watched it yet, check it out. It's really good. Code in number two is King of the Hill. Yes, King of the Hill. I sell propane and propane accessories. Uh, great, great movie. It's about a redneck family, basically, and yeah, it's a cartoon series. Basically, this was a show I watched before a new episode of The Simpsons came on, or a new episode of, like, Futurama came on and stuff, because... When I was younger, I always watched The Simpsons, and I watched, uh, I watched Family Guy when it first came on and stuff, and I watched Futurama and stuff, that's the shows I watched. King of the Hill was always a show I watched before those shows came on and stuff, when it was like, when I was watching Fox at night before I went to bed and stuff, I always watched my Futurama, my Simpsons, when Family Guy first came on, I watched Family Guy, and I watched King of the Hill. King of the Hill was always the thing I just watched before the shows I really wanted to watch came on, but... I grew to appreciate King of Hell over the years and stuff because when I got older, I started understanding the comedy more because I felt like Family Guy had a lot more juvenile comedy, which is why I liked it when I was younger, not so much now and stuff. Futurama still holds up, but mostly the first few seasons. Simpsons really holds up, but again, like the first ten seasons, then it just got stupid. King of, the Hill, King of the Hill stayed good and ended strong. That's the best thing about that show. The biggest compliment I can give King of the Hill is... It ended. It ended the series, and it ended strong. It's not like uh, even Futurama. Futurama ended. It ended strong, but Family Guy's still going. Simpsons is still going. American Dad is still going. Like, God, shoot me in the fucking face. Like, those shows were funny at the beginning. Family Guy got unfunny really quick. Like, after, like, season three, it got unfunny. American Dad, after, like, season five, got unfunny. Simpsons, after season 11, got unfunny and stuff. See, at least King of the Hell ended. And ended strong, and yeah, it's a funny show with great characters. I love Hank, I love Peggy, uh, Loanne, 
Bobby and his, his his buddies at the corner are all hilarious. Dale, Boomhauer, all of them are really funny. Enjoyable characters. There's some really um there's some pretty offensive jokes in this in this show. Uh, some of it is too offensive. Some of it is laugh a lot hilarious. And yeah, there's a lot of great episodes talking about good family issues as well and good uh, talk about race and stuff and pr different prejudices and stuff. They talk about a lot of good interesting topics on the show. And it's also a really funny show and definitely one of Mike Judge's Mike Judge's best movies slash TV shows. So yeah, King of the Hill, good one. And my number one favorite Mike Judge movie slash TV show is Idiocracy. Idiocracy is, I think, his best film. I think it is the best thing he has made so far. I love this movie. This movie is so stupid, but so brilliant in how geniusly smart it is of how dumb it is. It's so brilliant, this film. This is such a cleverly written film. It talks a lot about our society and stuff. Basically, it's about this guy, played by Luke, uh, Luke Wilson, he gets uh, cryogenically frozen, and then he goes into like the future, hundreds and hundreds of years. I think it's like a thousand years in the future and stuff. And the whole world is in like wasteland and stuff, and everyone in the world is really stupid. Like everyone's like IQ is like fifty percent down the middle. Everyone's IQ is like dropped fifty percent. Like it is, everyone is a moron. And the smartest man in the world is their president, and he's, like, average at best. He has average intelligence at best, and that's Terry Crews and stuff. And then when Luke Wilson comes into the future and stuff, he's, again, a very average person with a very average IQ, but to everyone else, he is, like, a genius and stuff, and it's super, super funny. And he also meets, like, Maya Rudolph, who also was frozen and everything, and... He also means, like, Dak Shepard. <laughs> really, really funny stuff. It talks a lot about the world and media and technology and how people are dumbing themselves down and stuff. How each generation, people get stupid and more stupid and more stupid and stuff. It's very good social commentary, and it's an interesting look about the world and our future and how it could possibly happen, especially, like, you know, with global warming and a lot of pollution that's happening and everything. It's just, it's... It's it's very grim and weird and dark and how very relevant this film is. It's super funny, but it's a future that we could definitely have. Trust me, people in our generation are getting dumber and dumber and stuff. And pollution's getting worse and worse and the environment is getting destroyed by each day. And this movie is very much could be our future. And that's why I think it's genius and very, very well directed and very, very well written. This movie is super, super funny. And I think... This is his best film. Hands down. Idiocracy, Mike Judge, it's his best film. So yeah, that was my ranking of all of Mike Judge's movies slash TV shows. So in the comment section below, please tell me. Are you a fan of Mike Judge? And if you are, what is your favorite TV show slash movie he has made? If you've seen them all, give me a ranking of all your favorites. If you're your least favorite to your favorite, comment below. Let me know. And as always, if you like this video, please like, subscribe to this channel, and join the dark side.